Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. Mary's Vicarage on this Wednesday, the 25th of November. It's good to be with you all um, this morning. Hope you had a good day yesterday. As I said, uh, I uh, got sworn in as a diocesan surrogate uh, yesterday, and that uh, means I can uh, issue common licenses to couples who are wanting to get married. And uh, no sooner had I been sworn in then yesterday afternoon I had my first inquiry uh, from a couple who are wanting to get married. Not here, <clears throat> I issue these licences for the whole of the Archdeaconry, um, but are hoping to get married uh, in mid-December. Fingers crossed uh, for them. So uh, um, I'll be seeing them in a week's time to issue them <clears throat> with a licence. Anyhow, good to see you all on what is a fairly dull day, <coughs> dull day today. And um, of course, more news is coming out now about how uh, we will be able to share or celebrate Christmas together. And um, the government guidelines are talking about um, three families or three households can meet <coughs> over a five day period in Christmas uh, over Christmas. Which will be good news for some, uh, difficult for others, and worrying, uh, worrying for others as well. Um, it pr uh, creates a particularly tricky problem for us as a family because uh, both my parents and uh, Kate's parents are separated, so that means it's not possible to see all of them uh, because that will be more than um, more than three. Uh, and then, of course, you have to factor in. Uh, our sisters who may also want to see um, uh, parents um, and of course if one of us goes then the other sibling can't um, so it's not as uh, straightforward as it <coughs> as it seems <coughs> though it will be good that um, hopefully it, it means that some people won't be having to spend Christmas on their own so that's a very positive uh, that's a very positive thing However, of course, there, there are the all the underlying warnings and uh, which is there that they've said that, uh, you know, there will be a spike after Christmas in uh, COVID cases because of people getting together. And that's a tricky one as well. And um, maybe it's actually better to um, hold fire and not get together at, um, at Christmas and just hold on for a few more months until... Uh, particularly our elderly relatives maybe have had been able to have the vaccine and such like and are um, given some protection uh, and then to um, to be able to get get together then <clears throat> so um, not particularly straightforward and, and families are going to have to make some quite uh, um, difficult decisions I think that uh, will need a bit of uh, a bit of thought um, anyhow for us directly, we're hoping that Alex will be able to come home from London in a couple of weeks' time. That looks like that's all uh, all on as the colleges and universities gear up for that. Uh, he'll finish his isolation tomorrow. <coughs> and um, uh, having had COVID, hopefully he will have some immunity or protection from it. But of course, what we're not clear about at the moment is even if you've had COVID, whether you can still carry it and pass it on to... Uh, to others. So uh, yeah, nothing simple, but there we go. Uh, with regard to Christmas services, I don't think anything has changed. I was looking at um, uh, some of the new guidelines that were there. Uh, communal worship can happen, so the, uh, we will be able to do a, a Christmas Eve, Christmas Day um, service. And those bubbles, those three families can come and worship together. Um, however, of course, that's only to the number of people we can physically and safely fit in our churches, um, <clears throat> which for uh, St Mary's Handley um, is probably a maximum of about 40 people if we're going to maintain social distancing. That's even within the family groups. Um, so <clears throat> it's not going to be like, uh, you know, some Christmas services we have nearly 300 people in the church. Um, so that's going to be greatly reduced and probably down at um, St Rumbold's Pentridge um, it's going to probably be between 20 to 30 people so um, it's not like we're going to be able to sort of pack them in. Uh, there's been no change on the ruling with regard to singing 
so we're not going to be able to sing carols though if you do have a choir a small choir they are able to in a sense perform or sing for the uh, congregation there is talk about getting people to hum silent night but i'm not quite sure how um, that works or, or not um, <clears throat> and again of course you then face the problem that um, even if you do put on a sort of nine lessons and carols whether it's with a small choir or using um, recorded music um, then of course all the restrictions still um, apply so you can't really put many people in the church in any case so um, uh, it's uh, it's a bit of a tricky one <clears throat> um, but for us here uh, at Handley uh, what we're going to do is there will be a Christmas Eve service but it's not going to be a, a midnight service as in previous years um, uh, part of the reason for that is because it looks like all um, you know hospitality venues and such like uh, will be closed and it also means that because of the restrictions on families there won't be big family groups um, together so we will have our Christmas Eve communion at around about six half past six I can't remember exactly what time I put in the downsman and we hope that will um, enable people who wish to <coughs> have a communion over Christmas to do so, so that one group can come to the Christmas Eve service at uh, around six o'clock, half past six, and then a different group of people can come to the Christmas Day service at Handley. So um, uh, that's what we're gonna be asking people not to come to both services, to choose one or t'other uh, to come to, either the Christmas Eve or the Christmas Day service if you're wanting a, a, a communion. Uh, because that in theory means that we could um, <clears throat> uh, uh, enable between 60 to 80 people to um, have communion over that Christmas period. Um, and then uh, down at uh, St Rumbold's um, we'll be doing uh, an 11.15 um, <clears throat> Christmas Day service. Again, socially distanced and, and with all those things uh, in place. So we hope there'll be some opportunities um, like that. Um, sadly there won't be a service, Christmas service at St Andrew's Gussage and that simply is because it's too small to even really attempt anything because with social distancing measures and such like you could probably get a dozen people in there at the most. Um, so uh, it's, uh, <coughs> it's just not practical unfortunately. Um, however on Boxing Day I'm hoping the Woozel Hunt can go ahead um, uh, in a sense, um, <clears throat> those family groups will be able to, it says that, you know, the three families, if you're together, will be able to come along and turn up for that. And providing uh, you're socially distanced from the other people who are there as we walk around. Uh, also, it's very clear that, <clears throat> excuse me, being outside reduces the um, uh, possibility of infection as well because <coughs> it disperses it in the air so I'm hoping on Boxing Day we can um, still have a bit of fun with the Woozel Hunt though sadly we won't be able to offer the hospitality inside the church uh, as we've done in previous years with some mulled wine and such like but uh, hopefully that means the children and youngsters can still have a bit of fun <coughs> trying to catch a Woozel and saying their um, uh, Christmas cracker jokes <coughs> So there we go. Um, so it's going to be a very different Christmas, uh, far more simplified. And we are hoping to be able to sort of decorate our churches in quite a special way um, this year. So um, <clears throat> as you begin to think of your uh, um, Christmas plans, I hope um, all goes <coughs> all goes well. <clears throat> right. Uh, today from um, Exciting Holiness. Uh, we've got two people we could have a think about today, uh, Catherine of Alexandria uh, and also Isaac Watts. And I thought we'd have a look at Isaac Watts because in a sense he's a bit of a local. Uh, Isaac Watts, um, very famous hymn writer. <coughs> it says about him. Born in Southampton in 1647, Isaac Watts was educated at the local grammar school and had the opportunity to go to, the, uh, uh, to, go to university but declined because he preferred the um, dissenting academy at Stoke Newington. He received there an education of high academic standard and he went on to become the pastor to the independent or congregationist church at Mark Lane in London. 
Because of his deteriorating health, he resigned his post in 1712 and retired to Stoke Newington. Seven years later, he opposed the imposition of the doctrine of the Trinity on his fellow dissenting ministers, which led to the belief that he had become a Unitarian. Isaac wrote many, uh, many collections of hymns and his faith showed clearly through them. When I survey the wondrous cross, Jesus who reign where the sun and many others still used in worship today. He died at Stoke Newington on this day in 1748. So that's Isaac Watts, um, hymn writer that we remember today. <clears throat> it's a shame we can't um, currently belt out uh, some of his hymns in, in our worship in church, but uh, that will come. That will come again. That will come again. So that's um, Isaac Watts. Now turning to um, <coughs> our Bible passage for today. Uh, and um, it's the gospel <coughs> from Luke and um, chapter 21 verses 12 to 19. Jesus said to his disciples, men will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to imprisonment and bring you before kings and governors because of my name. And that will be your opportunity to bear witness. Keep this carefully in mind. You are not to prepare your defence because I myself shall give you an eloquence and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relations and friends, and some of you will be put to death. You will be hated by all men on account of my name, but not a hair of your head will be lost. Your endurance will win you your lives. So quite a <coughs> sobering and hard <coughs> reading. Um, and of course, uh, for some Christians today in the world, that is very much uh, their reality. They have to meet in secret. There's very strict laws and rules in some countries about uh, the Christian faith. Uh, and um, if you uh, seek to evangelize or, or uh, develop mission in some of these uh, countries, that can lead to um, arrest. It can also lead to, to persecution and um, all sorts of things. So uh, it's important for us to remember that because uh, we are greatly, greatly privileged in this country that um, uh, we can worship freely without fear. Um, some people might think if you're a church girl or whatever, you're a bit odd, but at least you know you're not necessarily gonna be thrown into prison or ostracized um, because of it. But as I say, for many Christians uh, around the world, um, that is a real fear for them and um, and their families. And, uh, you know, there are some Christians in the world who, um, you know, we talk about Christian names. It's a very common phrase in this country, using our Christian names or what's your Christian name? Uh, well, in some of these countries, um, uh, uh, Christians have to adopt another name, almost a false name, because if they were to use their own Christian name, which would highlight them as a Christian um, it could cause problems for them in their places of work or their uh, place of education or whatever. So um, we do need to be mindful of that. Um, at the same time, there's always a flip side to that coin. And sadly, of course, there are parts in the world where Christians persecute those of other faiths. Um, and um, sadly, uh, the Christian church can be equally uh, as guilty of um, <clears throat> oppressing those who don't believe the same thing as others. <clears throat> it seems to be human nature, sadly. Um, so we're also mindful of where we carry that sin and persecute those who are not similar uh, or believe in the same way that um, that we do. Um, but quite a powerful, uh, quite a powerful text there. Um, thinking about that. <clears throat> well, I've started to fish out a few Christmas things. I went into the cupboard uh, uh, earlier this morning. Uh, some handley folk will recognise this. It's the posada um, that I think was used by Mel um, in previous years. And of course, the idea of this is it, uh, it tends to get passed around from house to house of different children. Um, but I'm going to use this this year, but in a slightly different way. Uh, unfortunately, because of the sort of issues of spreading viruses and things, we can't uh, really pass this from house to house just in case there's a danger that 
uh, it becomes contaminated and goes into another house. But um, uh, I am going to have some creative ways of using this, which I'm um, uh, coming up with, which will begin next week in um, uh, in December, and some ideas for um, how we can celebrate or do things at home over the Advent um, over the Advent period. So uh, watch out for <coughs> watch out for that. But for now, Mary and Joseph. Baby Jesus and the donkey are just going to sit over there <coughs> on my little table. Um, so uh, I hope you have a good day today. Um, I've got to do a bit of admin uh, and then I've got to um, I've got to do something which is a bit of a privilege and also going to be quite sad. I'm just going to finish writing a eulogy which I'm going to give tomorrow. There won't be a broadcast tomorrow because uh, Kate and I are leaving quite early in the morning to go back to my old parish for the funeral of Derek Jeans who was the first church warden I worked with uh, when I went there, arrived there over 20 years ago now. Uh, so I'm going to be sort of preparing that, uh, finishing that off. Um, but there won't be a broadcast tomorrow on Thursday, but there will be a broadcast on Friday and there won't be a broadcast on Saturday. But the Sunday service will be coming from um, St Andrews. It will be broadcast again. Uh, just a reminder that there's no communal worship, so please don't turn up for worship. Um, because uh, <coughs> nobody else is really supposed to be there apart from maybe one person <coughs> who's helped me set the church up. Um, but it will be a, a prayer book matin service uh, on Sunday at, uh, at 10 o'clock um, for uh, what will be our Advent um, Sunday service, I believe. So uh, um, look forward to maybe seeing you then, and I hope you will have uh, a good day. Let's have our prayer <coughs> from the... Um, prayer for the nation for today, <coughs> Wednesday, which is um, for businesses, the workplace and economic well-being. In this time of great challenge, we pray for the economic well-being of our country. We remember before God those who face great uncertainty in their work. We lift before God those who have lost their jobs and face an uncertainty and difficult future. We pray for a renewed commitment to our common life together. Amen. And um, highly relevant today is, of course, the Chancellor will be making his um, financial statements later on uh, today. Anyhow, hope you have a good day today. Let's just close with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Take care, folks. God bless. Good to see you all.